What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we'll be showing off the top five gaming mice of 2022, showing off some of the best releases that came out this year. Now, as with the routine of this series, I'm in the top five lists, there's gonna be more than five, as you can tell from the thumbnail. We have honorable mentions and runner-ups, different variations of each mouse, so yeah, just wanted to put that out there because I always see comments about it. Now with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up, hopefully you can find some good sales on these, but either way, I'll have them all listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out. Now kicking this one off at the number five spot today, we have the Fantech Aria. And if you're someone out there who loves a nice small egg-shaped mouse like the Razer Orochi, for example, then you are in luck with this. And just like the Orochi, the Aria XD7 has swappable shells. However, these serve an actual purpose with the included second shell that has no holes in it if you prefer that instead. So these obviously add much more value overall and a purpose versus just visual aesthetic. And they hold up too, which is one thing that I tested right away when I got these in, like the shells won't come off or become loose during everyday use. But swapping them is also a breeze. There's this tiny cutout on the bottom backside here where you can then detach it from the magnet holding it in place. Inside's also a storage slot for the USB receiver. Then the shell just snaps right back into place. Now in terms of weight on my scale, the stock configuration comes in at 61 and a half grams. The solid shell adds one gram, then without any top cover, it's just around 57 and a half grams. So the XT7 definitely on that smaller lightweight spectrum of the current mouse market but the grooves to the body just make it very, very comfortable to use. Underneath you have the 100% pure PTFE feet. We have a Pixar 3395 sensor up to 26,000 DPI. And underneath you can see for the button placement, you have a, a power switch and a Bluetooth toggle button, which means you have three mode of connectivity here with wired, wireless, or Bluetooth. And a button to toggle through your DPI cycles, coinciding with the LED light on the top of the mouse. So you can always know what DPI level you're at. But gaming with this was really awesome, and this mouse just definitely surprised me. It uses KLGM 8.0 switches, which are super clicky and tactile, very satisfying to use. And for a mouse at this size, just around 60 grams total, it does what every good mouse should accomplish, which is feeling like it's a natural extension of your hand. So the reason this cracks my top five is because, again, there's not a lot of mice with this unique egg shape, and I really think this does top the Orochi in every way. And for just under $80, the overall value I think of this is outstanding. You can get the XD7 in either black or white, and tons of credit goes to Fantech here. Really enjoyed my time using and testing this mouse ever since I got it in. Now for number four is a shocker from a brand new company, literally the newest company on this list with their newest release of their Lamzu Atlantis lineup. I remember seeing them post about this on Reddit when they were first creating it, and admittedly, I dismissed it because rarely, like one in a hundred times, does a company just come out of absolutely nowhere with a legitimate first release. And guess what? Lamzu is that 1% here with their Atlantis mouse. Also, want to give them a shout out for one of the nicest unboxing experiences. Packaging, you know, rarely matters, but it definitely adds to that overall first serotonin hit, and uh, they nailed it here. So it's available in five different color options, some really nice color combos as well. And the Atlantis rocks a really friendly, lightweight ambi shape at just around 56 grams. And taking a look at it with its construction, one of the ways they cut down to that lightweight design without having any holes in the top shell is by the base underneath the mouse with the really unique and open see-through design. So for the people who don't love holes in the top shell, this gives them the advantage by doing it underneath the mouse where you don't see it and it doesn't interfere with your hand or your palm, and it still effectively manages to cut down on the weight. Again, anything under 60 without physical holes in the top shell is definitely good to see. So they're using a PAW3395 sensor, adjustable from 200 all the way up to 26,000 DPI with Huano blue pink dot switches. As a medium mouse, I'd say in the mid 50s for weight, um, I'll say just from using it, it feels smaller than it actually is, if that makes any sense. Like, you know, obviously I'm doing the voiceover, but I'll be showing you the actual physical dimensions on screen. It just doesn't feel like this mouse is larger than that 123 millimeters long. In the hand, it manages to somehow feel more on that medium small side, I'd say. And gaming with this was definitely fun. When I go through my testing process, I usually, you know, sit down, play a bunch of different games, but I'll mess around in shooters and see how it feels with sniping, quick run and gunning and something like a free for all mode. And I really didn't want to put this down. I think given the fact they have five different color options, 
It's really solid overall, like in terms of execution, for just around 90 bucks, Lamzu is doing some incredible stuff with this being their first release. So at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning, this mouse literally came out of nowhere and just floored me. It's fantastic and I'm really excited to see what Lamzu does for the future. Because if this is their first mouse, it's gonna be really cool to see what they can give us later on down the line as well. But just killing it today, coming out of the number four spot with the Lamzu Atlantis. Now for number three, if you are a lover of the G Pro X Super Light, but you wanted a maybe smaller, lighter version, whoo, the Saurus gotcha. Designed for claw or fingertip users, at just 45 grams in the super lightweight form factor, the Sora is a head spinner. This is the last mouse that I got in for testing and it really shook up this whole list. I'm not kidding you, like at 45 grams with no holes or structural weaknesses in the shell, it's mind blowing. It legit feels like an empty mouse. I haven't been, you know, mind effed by a product in a while and this one did it. So as I mentioned a minute ago, this is gonna be perfect for those who want a smaller and much lighter G Pro X Superlight. And while yeah, it does look almost too much like it with the black and white accents, the logo placement, I mean, there's really only so much companies can do to differentiate the exterior of a mouse. So I'm not saying that they're trying to copy the Superlight, but they're coming for its user base for sure, and they will effectively be able to do that, I'll say. The Superlight came out two plus years ago as well, and I can confidently say this is a better mouse than that. It's using the 26,000 DPI Pixar PAW3395 sensor, Wano pink dot switches, their lag-free snappy fire wireless tech they call it, and equipped with 70 hours of battery life, and it's under 100 bucks at $95? It does seem too good to be true. Like, come on, there's gotta be a catch, but there isn't. I also dig the slight texture to the coating versus the matte on the G Pro X Superlight, which showed every single smudge and fingerprint. The feet here are also buttery smooth. It is a solid, solid mouse that performed flawlessly. You know, pulling like quick 180s in game to cover my backside, obviously nothing like sensor spin outs. I haven't had too, too much time to game with this since like I said, it arrived just in the last few weeks. But the time that I did get to put it to the test was definitely enough to confidently carve its way into the top five. And I'll be using this a lot more in the coming months. So with Ninjutsu taking the number three spot here with their Sora mouse, again, this just, it, it feels like there's nothing in it. I'm really surprised how they managed to make such a featherweight mouse overall with a very solid build. So great stuff with the Sora. Now, the number two mouse is probably one of my personal favorites of the year, and I did a dedicated review on it already. That goes to Pulsar with their X2 Mini. They also have the X2 as well, which is the medium sized version, but this X2 Mini is extremely popular right now in the mouse market. When it comes to a small ambi mouse under $100, this I think is top of the line. The X2 does follow the Pulsar design language in a sense where we have that open and exposed bottom, but as you probably picked up on by now, we don't have any cutouts or holes in the top shell like they used to have with their X-Lite models. As for the shell and the coating, I will say this is a good job of not picking up any smudges or fingerprint oils from your hands. And they're releasing these mice in a bunch of colors, which is nice to see. You got black, white, red, there's a green one, and I'm sure more to come, hint, hint. So taking a closer look underneath, you can spot the off-white like inspired PCB design. The feet here, yet again, are 100% pure PTFE skates. We have a dedicated DPI button with four DPI presets saved onto the mouse. Again, coinciding with the LED light right above the side buttons. And then you have your on and off switcher, which I much prefer over having one button that does both power and DPI. This is just much more convenient. Then smack dab in the middle is the 26,000 DPI PAW3395 PixArt sensor in both the X2 Mini here and the Medium X2 as well. In terms of size and dimensions for the X2 Mini, it tips my scale right around 53 grams and holds true to the smaller spectrum of mice at just around 116 millimeters long and 56 millimeters in the middle grip point. It's honestly like a smaller and wireless Endgame Gear XM1, which is one of my favorite mice last year. So it only makes sense that I like this so much. Now for my time gaming with it, and using it, it's been nothing short of fantastic. 
And it's funny because in the past, I always gravitated more towards the medium sized mice to fit my hand and my grip, which depending on what I'm doing in game, I'm usually like a claw fingertip hybrid, but I've absolutely loved using the smaller mini version here, which is why earlier, like I said, this has been one of my favorite mice to use personally. The clicks feel great as well with the KLGM 8.0s, the feet are super smooth. It's such a nice feeling experience. The way it feels is just natural. When you're gaming in the heat of the moment, the less you think about your physical mouse, the more you can focus on your gameplay in front of you, right? You're gonna excel. And that's exactly what a simple, no extra bells and whistles mouse allows you to do. I had zero issues with it, no hiccups or latency in gaming or anything like that. And I've charged it only a handful of times as well when I was using it as my main mouse. I believe it's rated for around 70 hours of use. But man, this really, really surprised me. Pulsar killing it with the X2 Mini. So as I said, even though it's like the number two mouse, this is probably one of my personal favorites of the year. Even though it's not ranked number one on my list today, um, I still think what Pulsar is doing with the X2 Mini is really, really great. They're a company who's been continually putting out new mice that are just getting better, better, and better. And I know with this list so far, you know the top four have all been very similar, smaller, lightweight, and be mice, that's kind of just the way the market's going, but good stuff from Pulsar. Now for number one, we have a tie today. They're the same company who put out top tier releases this year, but for two different, you know, gamers with an Ambi and an Ergo mouse. And if you don't get it yet, we have the number one spot, the Razer Viper V2 Pro, and also the Death Adder V3 Pro. Ambi and Ergo. So considering both these mice from Razer have the same internals pretty much in technical specs with their new Focus Pro 30K optical sensor, the main difference to these as I pointed out is their shape and dimensions. The Viper is Ambi and the Death Adder is for the Ergo user. And both are obviously upgraded versions from their predecessor with the Viper V2 Pro coming as the Pro upgrade from the Viper Ultimate and the Death Adder V3 Pro from the V2. Now it may seem like just an easy pick to throw Razer mice at number one, or you could be thinking it's a BS pick, but the reasoning behind this is simple. Razer's technology is just ahead of the competition. There is data out there that proves their Focus Pro sensor with their hyperspeed technology gives Razer the edge in terms of sensor speed and accuracy. And really, at the end of the day, that's the reasoning for them taking the number one spot. And listen, I even trashed Razer in my Viper V2 Pro review for the pricing, which I still didn't agree with until it was dropped to about $120 with sales recently. But their mindset with this release over the 2019 Viper Ultimate was the pro approach. Ditch the RGB, make it lighter, ditch the side grips, ditch the right-sided buttons, add USB-C, and make something super accurate, reliable, and light for the pro gamer. And like I said, even though I thought it was too much money at launch, they did what they set out to accomplish, make a top of the line mouse. And that same thing goes for the Death Adder. It looks very similar in terms of the design, not shape obviously, but that too has no rubber coating anymore. The textures are identical between the V2 Pro and the Death Adder. There's still no more RGB to this model. They set out to make a pro mouse with top of the line technology, which is why they both take the number one spot. And yeah, sure, I could have crowned one over the other here, but it's for two different users. And even though I prefer the Viper lineup for the Ambi shape, who am I to say that that's the reason that it's better over the Death Adder, you know? So hopefully that justifies my reasoning for having them both at the number one spot. But again, it's hard to really argue with facts. Their sensor and the wireless tech is just the best out there right now. And when it comes to a wireless gaming mouse, that's what you want speed, accuracy, and reliability. So depending on sales, you know, both models are between 120 to 140. They're the pricier options on this top five so far, but for the third time now, their tech and sensor is number one. So while that will do it for the top five, six of my list for 2022, there are some honorable mentions that I still wanna shout out. And 2022 was a really sneaky year for good mice. I feel like with that big boom of the whole lightweight trend, from 2020, the last two years were kind of just like in our face, all these new mice. But this year it was kind of in the shadows. We got some really good releases. And one of them that I feel like flew under everyone's radar from HyperX was the Pulsar Haste Wireless. And I'm gonna toss it to BT for his opinion. 
What's up guys, it's BD here. Shout out to Frank P for having me on here to cover the runner up mouse of the year. A mouse that often gets overlooked, the HyperX Pulsefire Haste Wireless. Mainly because the price when it came out was a little higher than we expected, but that has all changed recently as the price has dropped down to $65, making this one of the best buys in the gaming mouse space currently. So what does $65 get you? It gets you a lot. It gets you a 60 gram lightweight mouse that's only two grams up from the wired version, all while keeping this well balanced. I'm telling you, whoever pulled this off at HyperX needs a raise. You're also getting 100 hours of battery life, which is above the average in today's market. It's got an accurate sensor, PTFE feet, TTC golden micro switches, and great placement of the side buttons. But that doesn't even come close to the best part of this mouse, which is the shape and the comfort. It's a medium sized mouse, making it viable for most gamers out there. Great with a lot of grip styles, mainly claw grip. The diamondback shape forms naturally to the back of your palm, providing you with extreme comfort and control while aiming. Now, when you put all this together, it's easy to see why the Pulsefire Haste Wireless is the runner up to the mouse of the year. All right, that's gonna do it for me. Once again, my name is BT, and again, shout out to Frank P for having me on today. So yes, this is a very, very sneaky good mouse. And I know BT mentioned the price cuts of it being down to $65. I just checked. It's been on sale for 50 bucks recently. So if you want a super lightweight, affordable mouse for 50, this is a hell of a deal. Super under the radar. And now for the second honorable mention, might get some crap for it, but I don't care. Final Mouse did some really, really good stuff with their Starlight Pro 10Z release. Final Mouse is definitely one of those companies that you can meme them all you want. They were really one of the first to go the lightweight trend, and here we are today. Everyone's going lightweight. They switched materials to this magnesium alloy, which is super lightweight but durable, and now we're seeing more companies start to do that as well. And I just feel like each year with each new release, these Final Mouse mice have gotten better and better, and I'm really, really digging this 10Z version. They make them in smaller medium sizes at 42 grams or 47 grams for the medium, but they just feel so, so good, honestly. The reason why it makes the list, but not my top five, is because of the obvious things surrounding these mice, is the availability and the price. This was $190 at launch, which is by far the most expensive mouse on this list, and once they sell out, they're done and they sell out super quick and you can find them on eBay for like twice the price. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for my list of the top five gaming mice of 2022. Hope you all enjoyed. Like I said before, I'll have them all listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out and hopefully find some of them on sale this holiday season with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up and maybe giving you a good little, you know, list for the holiday season to pick one up if you wanna upgrade your mouse this year as well. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day. If you're one of those clowns asking where the 2020 G Pro X Super Lite is, despite this video being the best of best from 2022, if you're asking why a two-year-old mouse isn't mentioned in the best of this year's releases, you gotta get some help. Mental and physical.